Students, faculty, family, and friends, good evening, and welcome to the graduation ceremony of the Herbert Henry Dow High School Class of 2017. <laughs> My name is John Apo, and I have the great privilege of serving as class president of this awesome graduating class. I would like to introduce our Midland Public School board members, Angela Brandstadt, Lynn Baker, and Mary Friedel. Also, <laughs> also, our superintendent, Michael Sharo, is joining us. Thank you all for your support and for joining us this evening. <laughs> Please turn off or silence your electronic devices. Please rise, gentlemen, remove your caps, and turn your attention to the United States flag as we honor our country with the singing of the national anthem by the Dow High School Chamber Singers and Dow High School Band. Hello, I'm excited to say it's time for us to invite some extraordinary people up to speak. Our first speaker is a brilliant young woman, the president of our net chapter of the National Honor Society, and an individual liked by all. So please join me in welcoming Apoorva Oja up to the stage to give her speech, No Perfect Tomorrow. Thanks, Noah. And hi, everyone. As I stand here today and look at all of you, the only thought that comes to mind is, wow, we actually made it. These last few months have felt like an eternity, and I know you all can agree with me when I say I am so relieved to be here. I'm relieved to have survived countless last-second literary analyses and Spanish presentations. I'm relieved to have soldiered through far too many mind-numbing lectures and ridiculously large piles of homework. I'm relieved to have made it through four years of mental, physical, and emotional growth. I am relieved. But somehow, there remains a part of me that knows that while this moment feels like a desperate, long-awaited breath of freedom, it's actually the end. It's the end of so many beginnings, 
It's the end of our childhoods, the end of classes composed of 30 familiar faces, the end of 10-year-long friendships, the end of amazing, inspiring lectures by our favorite teachers, the end of the melodrama of high school dating, the end of our time as the class of 2017. When we walk out those doors today, we will no longer be joined by the same bond of shared misery over awkward high school moments or awful homework assignments. Of course, we'll be connected by the bittersweet memories that we've forged here in this building, but it just won't be the same. We'll each have drastically different lives. Some of us will be in college. Some of us will be taking a year off. Some of us will be already working, and some of us might be serving in a branch of the armed forces. But regardless of what we do, the future holds so many opportunities and failures for all of us. And honestly, that scares me. Right now, each of us is, I think, finally beginning to understand our potential. We have endless dreams and aren't burdened by the responsibilities of being a true adult. And all that potential scares me. There's a little voice in my head saying, like it always does at glorious moments like these, what if you mess it all up? What if you can't handle adulthood? What if you can't make it in the real world? What if you fail? It's a thought that we've all had before, a thought that has always plagued us during our greatest successes and our most unavailing of defeats. And it's a hard thought to argue with. But when, it, when that anxiety crawls into my mind, I always do one thing. I close my eyes and remember my favorite books. So I want all of you to take a moment and close your eyes and think of the best book you've ever read. Actually do it. Or think of the best movie you've ever seen or the best TV show you've ever watched. Really picture it. Don't just think of the name, but imagine the characters and the setting. Immerse yourself into that story, into that moment. Now open your eyes and think, why do you love that show? Why do you adore that book? I know for me, and for many of you, I'm sure the answer is because it makes me feel like the chosen one. Because it reminds me that average people can do great things. And that being incredible doesn't take luck or destiny. It takes passion and persistence. Katherine Johnson wasn't chosen by God or destined for greatness. She just loved math. Captain America wasn't born a superhero or a leader. He just wanted to help people. Boo Radley never sought fame or recognition. He simply wanted to protect Gem and Scout from the murderous impulses of a drunken racist. Sorry if that spoiled the ending for those of you who haven't read it, which is like probably 80% of us. It's fine. <laughs> None of these characters or heroes are anything better than you or me. So if a black woman from the 1960s can send John Glenn to space, you can do the impossible too. And when I say that, I'm not just talking to the 20% of us that are going to work in STEM fields. Believe it or not, Varun, other professions do exist. I'm talking to all of us. I'm talking to the artists, musicians, and dancers of our school. I'm talking to the athletes, poets, and political activists. I truly believe that passion is the only weapon a person needs to conquer failure and fear. Whether your passion is acid-based titrations or dropping mixtapes from your parents' basement. I'm looking at you, Michael Moore. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, I am an idealist and a dreamer at heart, but hoping is easy. Dreaming is easy. The challenge is dragging yourself out of sleep to face the world when all you want to do is close your eyes Bury yourself in the warmth of your blankets and drift into your dreams again. Unfortunately, enthusiasm on its own cannot create success. In addition to passion, we need to embrace persistence. We need to have the courage to wake up from our dreams and week by week, month by month, year by year, work to quench the thirst that lives within us. And I know that first step can be terrifying. Like I said, it's always at glorious moments like these that the little voice in our head wakes up and whispers, you'll never get there, or don't take the risk. I remember the first time I consciously made the decision to tell that voice to shut up and go away. It was two years ago when I was in Miss Pancost's American Literature class. She'd given us this brilliant poetry project. Well, I thought it was brilliant. Not everyone shared that sentiment. In any case, for the project, we had to write our own poems. And at the end, for extra credit, we could, we could perform them at the Dow High School Poetry Slam. I remember how much energy I poured into those poems and how I endeavored to polish every word. When the end of the project approached, I had to make a decision about whether or not I would perform a poem. I knew that my writing would be nowhere near the caliber of the other experienced writers participating in the slam, 
But we just finished watching Louder Than a Bomb in class, and suddenly I was obsessed with slam poetry, which seems unorthodox, but you know how after you watch a James Bond movie or a Mission Impossible movie, you suddenly feel like you want to be a spy? It was kind of like that. I mean, I remember the first time I watched Hidden Figures, I thought, I want to be a mathematician, completely disregarding the fact that math makes me want to punch a wall and I'd gotten a C on my last test. Anyway, I made the decision to perform my poem, boldly telling the naysayers in my head to quiet down. I spent the entire day of the slam in a state of nausea, and by the time I was finally called to the stage, I'd wish I'd had a time machine so I could go back and slap my past self in the face. Nikhil, where were you in my time of need? I really could have used some string theory to help me build that time machine. With weak legs, I trudged up to the stage and looked down at the poem in my hands. I remember they were shaking so violently that I couldn't even really read what I had written. For a second, I seriously considered running off stage, and the voice in my head piped up and with honeyed words tried to convince me that I didn't have to do this, I didn't need the extra credit, and I could always read a different poem some other time at another slam when I was more experienced. But before I could change my mind, I threw myself into the poem. Less than two minutes later, I was done. I'm pretty sure that in my nervousness, I flew through the poem like it was a debate speech instead of a work of art. As soon as I was finished, I rushed off stage, ignoring the polite applause and scrambled to get out of the theater. When I got outside, I still felt giddy, but satisfaction had taken the place of nausea. I never won anything for that cringeworthy performance, but I was still proud of it because instead of letting excuses stop me, I'd taken a substantial step towards my dream, which at the time was to be a slam poetry expert. I'd considered more than a handful of times waiting until the next year to perform, waiting until I had more experience, until I had more time, until I had more confidence. I could have easily waited for a perfect tomorrow, a perfect opportunity to take the risk, but the problem with perfect tomorrows is that they don't exist. There will never be a perfect moment in our lives when taking the first step towards our dreams isn't risky. And if we keep waiting for a perfect tomorrow, our lives will pass us by before we notice. I think the following quote captures this idea perfectly. One day, you're 17 and you're planning for someday. And then quietly, without you ever really noticing, someday is today and then someday is yesterday, and this is your life. It's a heart-wrenching thought, but it's true. There's no such thing as a perfect tomorrow. So we all have to make an effort from now until our last breaths to live for perfect right nows and perfect todays. Thank you. If you do not know our next speaker, you probably should. Ben Price is a star. He's won Homecoming King, Drum Major, and many awards for musical and theatrical performances. His voice has been a constant presence at Dow High as a part of the daily announcement team. Every day, he'd remind us to support our fellow Chargers, and in some unique way, he'd tell us to have a great day. On this final great day of our graduation, Please join me in welcoming our next commencement speaker, Ben Price. Thank you, Sean. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know and you're the guy who'll decide where to go. You might recognize these inspirational words from Oh, The Places You'll Go, a children's book and classic graduation present whose verses dispense more wisdom than many philosophy books do. Considering the task of writing a commencement speech, I thought, what does the class of 2017 want to hear? What's a good parting message as we go off into this brave new world? Traditional speeches often include figuring out who you are, but how can I tell you how to do that when I'm still figuring out who I am? Commencement speakers might decide to share the top tips to successfully make your way through life, but I'm in the same boat as each of you. I don't know any better. Everyone always wants to know what's going to happen in their future, but I'm not the person to ask. So I thought, if I can't look forward, I can always look back. I thought back past freshman year, 
past believing that our plumes were on backwards, and how we worried that the seniors would beat us up if we looked at them the wrong way. I remembered past middle school, the bad hairstyles, and each and every voice crack. I went all the way to elementary school, when our biggest problems weren't calculating the integral of the logarithmic functions and matching our tux to our date's dress, but who got to be the line leader for the week, and whether we got to have sack lunch or suffer hot lunch. And thinking back to those days of snowball fights on the playground and stuffing messily taped valentines into each other's desks made me remember a man whose books I would always pick up on library day. Theodor Geisel, or as we all know and love him, Dr. Seuss. He gave us such wonderful gifts like The Cat in the Hat, The Green Eggs and Ham, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Horton Hears a Who. The doctor not only gave us whimsical rhymes and delicately crafted stories of sneetches on beaches, wockets in pockets, and of course, tweedle beetle puddle paddle battles. Dr. Seuss was actually giving us wide-eyed, open-minded children advice for our futures. We were reading words of wisdom that we would never fully appreciate for years. As I looked through my childhood bookcase, blew off the metaphorical dust, and poured over my collection of Seuss masterpieces, I was filled once again with the childhood wonder that always seems to disappear after you complete the geometry proof test. And I want to share some of the wisdom imparted through the doctor's quirky rhymes with those of you here today. So, number one, it is better to know how to learn than to know. If you know how to learn, then you are prepared for the rest of your life. This is something that, hopefully, we have learned during our years in high school. It's like the old and overused maxim. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Our world moves at a breakneck pace. What you learn from your textbooks one day can quickly become obsolete and outdated. We are all going on to further learn about the world. Some of us will attend colleges and universities, some will be perfecting their technical skills in trade schools, and others will be training in the military. Wherever we are, we have to be in charge of our own futures and our own educations. Take advantage of everything the world has to offer and never stop learning. Look critically at what, at what you're asked to learn and how. If it's too little and too confined to the campus, then realize the need to stretch out the time you spend. Take courses not on the prescribed menu and travel. In the humanities, nothing substitutes for travel abroad, though it takes time, money, and the courage to risk being thought unfocused by the faculty, by your family, and maybe even yourself. Guide yourself, believe in yourself, and make the effort to take control of your education. Number two, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Here we have a brilliant quote from the Lorax, a little orange man whose facial hair is almost as good as Mr. Fry's. We are the next generation. In the next 50 years, we will be the ones who have the most influential impact on our lives, on our country, on our world. But in today's society, it can be so easy for us to just sit back and enjoy the ride. There's so much going on in the world around us that it's tempting to just get absorbed into who shared what on social media, the last selfie that a celebrity took, and looking at Dr. Poole's latest tweets. But if we all just become indifferent about the society that is shaping around us and leave it to fate and the politicians and businessmen as we say to ourselves, yeah, they know what they're doing, then nothing will ever change. Apathy is stability. Stability is comfortable. Comfortable is stagnant. Stagnation is easy. We all want an easy life. What's hard is to go out there, stand in the middle of the street, and say, we need change. Without those proud people who refuse to sit down, we wouldn't be in the America that we have today. We wouldn't even have America. Number three, when you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, ducky, you're really quite lucky. Now, now, I know you're thinking, yeah, I get to sit in a hot gym with 300 sweaty teenagers for three hours. I'm real lucky. But you really are lucky to be here today. But since we're in Midland and engineers don't really believe in that magical thing called luck, here are some statistics instead. First step, mom meets dad. One in 20,000. A one in 10 chance that they talk to each other, one in 10 that they actually go on a date, a one in 10 to reach the mythical second date, and another one in 10 to go steady. It's a coin toss, one in two, if they actually stick together long enough to have kids. For those of you keeping track, so far that's one in 40 million, or the same as the size of the population of the state of California. Here's where the numbers get big though, so pull out your TI-84s. The chance that the one egg meets the one sperm, one in 400 quadrillion. 
And now we have to presuppose that every single one of your ancestors met and lived to reproducing age, and your lineage has remained unbroken for the length of human existence is one in 10 to the 45,000th. It's a lot of zeros. And then we go through the sperm and egg thing for each of them. That's one, one quadrillion times one quadrillion for each. And that gives us a grand total of one in 10 to the 2,685,000. That's the same as if the population of Chicago all met up on Main Street, each one with a trillion sided die, and each one rolled the exact same number. A miracle is an extraordinary event to the point where against all odds, it should theoretically be impossible. By God, I'd say you're a miracle. You were that lucky to have been born. Lucky to have been raised by supporting family that's gotten you to this point and is probably sitting out there watching you right now. And even if you have had to endure hardships and deal with difficult issues along the way, as many of us have, you're still lucky. Lucky to be made up of the sort of genetic material that pushed you to be resilient and brave and to get you where you are today. And always remember, you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps, but you were lucky enough to get bootstraps. We have been lucky to have been born in America, in Michigan, in Midland, to have received an education, to have Dr. Poole as our principal, and to be sitting here in this hot and sweaty gymnasium receiving a diploma that we have earned, and more than lucky to have had each other to have shared this experience with. Number four, you'll miss the best things in life if you keep your eyes shut. What Mr. Geisel writes here is exemplified in another form of media, in my all-time favorite movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, by the brilliant John Hughes. Ferris says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. To me, it seems like just yesterday when we were taking our first steps into senior year and wondering how long it would take for our senioritis to set in, if it hadn't set in already. This whole year was filled with, I cannot wait to be done with this. But in this last week, and especially our last day, that became, do we have to be done with this? Well, all of us wouldn't give for one more football game, to march the halls again, Another art project, just a few more minutes in fellowship with each other at our last assembly. With everything going on in our lives the past four years, from sports to music to art to drama and clubs, and balancing that with our social lives and succeeding academically, we have sometimes gotten so wrapped up in doing everything and going so fast and flying through and trying to enjoy every single moment of it that we can, never having an empty second until eventually every day becomes the same as we do the same routine over and over again until every day becomes a blur. Stop. Slow down. Don't rush. Look around. Enjoy the moment. Say hello to someone you've never talked to today. Learn a new skill. Pick up an instrument or a ball or a paintbrush and create something. Enjoy something that you never have before. High school moved pretty fast. College will move even faster. Take your time and keep your eyes open. And once more, in the words of Dr. Seuss, everything stinks until it's finished. So let me wrap this up. If I get all of you to take away one thing from this speech, I hope that you'll go to your bookshelf or your storage room or your library and open a Dr. Seuss book. My elaborations on his masterful writings are nothing compared to the real thing. So make sure you know how to learn. Make sure to care a whole awful lot. Realize how lucky you are. Keep your eyes open and look around. And as the good doctor said, kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So Dow High Class of 2017, get on your way. Thank you. Kurt Gledhill started into Dow High just like us, nervous, excited, and four years ago. Since then, just as all of us have, he has created a legacy. When he was an art teacher at Northeast, he won the Gerstacker Teachers Award, and his passion for teaching has only increased in his time here at Dow High. Mr. Gledhill, for many students, is not only a teacher, but a guide. He has a rapport with his students in a way that not many other teachers do. High school has been the most difficult and confusing years of our lives so far, but we trust him. Sorry. 
But we trust him enough to come to him when we can't get our color palette right or when we need a friend to hear us out. There have been times, talking to Mr. Gledhill, when we even stop and say, we're speaking to you as Kurt, not as Mr. Gledhill. This man is one of the kindest people I know, and he has made such a huge difference in my life and many others. He has such an incredible energy that inspires his students. The most common thing I hear in the art room is, where is Mr. Gledhill? Because he is always busy helping one student or the next. I cannot say enough good things about this man, so without further ado, the chair of the art department and my friend, Mr. Gledhill. Well, that was quite, a, quite an intro, thank you. Um, before I start, I would like you to join me in uh, recognizing a couple people that are here with us today. Um, my mom joined me, she's up in the stands today, and uh, my uh, mother and father-in-law also have been great leaders and mentors to me in all of my years, and especially the last few years, and so if you would just give a little round of applause to them. Um, I'd also like you to uh, help me thank somebody that's had a lot to do with who I am, and that's my wife who continues to support me and my poor son and daughter who um, get, get tired of hearing the response of, where's dad? He's at work. <laughs> Weekends, evenings, whatever, and, and uh, they, they are faced with the reality of what it means to be a teacher of this great high school. So thank you, my wife and my children. <laughs> so I was sitting here in my seat as this all gets started, and I realized I'm not good at giving speeches. So for eight to 10 hours a day, every day, I am performing, giving speeches, completely off the cuff, unscripted. And now I'm forced to read my words. So bear with me as I'm way outside my comfort zone for this speech. First of all, let me thank you, class of 2017, for the honor of being your speaker. I am humbled to even be considered. As I, begin to think about this, as I began to think about this night, I wondered what an art teacher might be able to offer as a small bit of wisdom to an entire graduating class, artists and non-artists alike. Color. I decided I would encourage you to color your world. So I begin with violet. Violet is traditionally the color of royalty. In America, we would call that leadership. Whatever you set out to do, be a leader. If you are going to be a parent, parent well. If you are going to be in business, do business morally and ethically. If you are going to fix cars or sell cars, do so honestly. If you are going to fix broken lives or broken legs, do so with the focus and integrity that you would expect from others. Lead in your own specific way, lead to make this world a better place. Red, one of the strongest, boldest colors, often represents anger. And it's okay to be angry for the right reasons. Be angry about injustice, about power misused, about people being mistreated. Righteous anger is appropriate, and sometimes it's necessary. Red also means love. No religion in this world is based on hate. If you consider yourself a religious person, read the words of your prophet, your shaman, your savior, and learn to love. There is no excuse for hate, no reason. We don't need any more of it. Learn to love and love well. Maybe you will love a boy or a girl, maybe your country or a movement. Love means giving of ourselves, dedicating ourselves to another. It means giving up our darkest parts, our fear, our jealousy, our selfishness, and instead pouring positivity and encouragement into another. Practice loving by looking for ways to give. If done correctly, love will enrich and benefit your own life as much as that of the receiver. The light of a candle, when shared with another candle, is compounded rather than diminished. This is so with love also. So learn to love, and in so doing, add more love to the world. Orange is the color of danger. Make sure there's a little danger in your life. Take a risk from time to time. Maybe it's stepping up at your place of employment or stepping out to form a business of your own. Maybe it's walking across the room to say hello to that person that everyone else is avoiding. Take a risk. 
Don't always play it safe. Make use of the courage that's inside of you. Orange is also the color of creativity. Some of you are going into the art field and creativity will be part of your everyday. Those of you not going into art will still need creativity in your life as well. It may take the form of creative solutions at work. It may be how you solve a problem with your own spouse or wife or son or daughter. It may even mean taking a painting, drawing, or ceramics class. But get that orange in there. Be creative. It's one of the greatest things that makes us human. Yellow is the color of fear, and it's okay to be afraid. Courage is just action in spite of fear. Be willing to take a stand, even if you find that you're standing alone. Yellow is also the color of sunshine. Get out in the sun. And when you can't find sunshine, for this is Michigan after all, be sunshine to those around you. A bright smile, a kind gesture, a pleasant word can add sunshine to any person's day. Blue is sorrow. You'll have it in your lives. It's just part of the deal. Understand that it's coming and welcome it as being part of the balance of life. Surround yourselves with positive people, family and friends, and just power through it. You'll grow stronger and as a result, you'll be better prepared to be there for the next person in need. Blue is also sky, as in the sky is the limit. To blue sky an idea means that if there's nothing limiting you, what would you really want to do? This is that moment in your life. Take what you've been given so far and dream big. You are the only one that limits that, only you. White is purity. Keep your body and your mind clean. Do not get sucked into the various ways that you can destroy what's been given. Life is a gift. Every single day is a gift. Get healthy and stay healthy. Drink lots of water. Get some exercise every day if you can. And make good choices. There are a lot of things out there that are not good for you or any of us. Some are legal and some are not. It doesn't really matter. You know how to be smart, so be smart with your choices. Either keep them within intelligent limits or keep them out of your life entirely. It might be fast food or alcohol or even illegal narcotics. Not everything has to be experienced. Some of them are deadly on the first try. Be safe, live clean, and surround yourself with good media as well as good people so that the inside of your heart and the inside of your soul are as clean as everything else. Black is mystery. Keep some mystery in your life. Allow that there are some things that you simply are not going to fully understand. Go ahead and contemplate, but don't expect all of the questions to have answers. Look up in that star-filled sky once in a while and just enjoy it as pure beauty. Black is also strength. Strength can mean silently enduring the unavoidable. It can also mean standing up for what's right. Develop strong beliefs and then live in a way that supports those beliefs. Green is the color of the earth. Whatever you go out and do with yourself, with family or with a career, take care of the earth. Yes, of course, reduce, reuse, and recycle, but not just as a catchphrase to slap on a t-shirt, but as a lifestyle. Support companies that are earth-friendly and demand that companies that aren't earth-friendly begin to do their part to help and not hurt what we need to survive. For you personally, it might mean picking up some trash that you didn't drop or carrying reusable bags into the grocery store. Also, get out into the woods or onto the water and see it and feel it for yourself. Volunteer, plant a tree, plant a forest, get out there and touch it. Green is also the color of money. And it's said that money is the root of all evil, but it is also the source of much good. Be part of the latter. Some of you will make a lot of money and that's great. Making money can take a lot of hard work and you can certainly be proud if you attain wealth and status. But realize that money is only a tool, not a goal. Make it a tool for good, a tool for making a difference. Pay for someone's gas or the next person in line at Starbucks. Donate to a homeless shelter. Support a startup business. Build a park. Fund a scholarship. Lastly, green, especially when coupled with gold, is the color of Dow High, your school, and soon, your alma mater. Remember what you have learned here. For better or for worse, this school and faculty have shaped you so far. 
Remember friends and teachers and classes and clubs. Remember spirit weeks and assemblies, car shows and the Ren Fair. Remember that time that you left the art room to go to the bathroom and somehow returned a short time later with Slurpees from Speedway. <laughs> Happened more than once. For some of you, these will have been some of the best years of your life. For others, your best years are yet to come. So go now and live, but don't do it colorless in the shadows. Don't live in grayness or mediocrity, and don't wait for someone else to do what you can do. Do it yourself. Live bold and bright with all of the blending and mixing that you can muster. You have all of the colors that you need. Go out and color your world and make it awesome. All the Dow High Choir singers can go join the rest of the choir now. Oops. Now please sit back and enjoy the Dow High Chambers Choir singing Humble and Pride by McKenna.
Our next speaker made a splash when he first came to Dow. From sporting events to band concerts, he attended as many Dow High events that he could to support the school as much as he possibly could. He helped make our first year with him and our last year here at Dow the best one and the one we will never forget. So please help me in welcoming our principal, Dr. Poole. Thank you, Gabby. I appreciate your introduction. On behalf of the staff at HH Dow High School, it is my pleasure to be addressing the class of 2017, the 47th class to graduate from Dow High School, and all of their accomplishments. I could not have asked for a better senior class to begin my high school principal career. When I was named principal last spring at Dow High School, of Dow High School, I was excited to see many students that I'd had over the previous three years at Jefferson Middle School. This senior class was the only group that I did not know. Not only did they accept me into their culture, but they helped, me make, they helped make me a part of it. For that, I will forever be indebted to this class. This past fall, I was approached by the class regarding if I wanted a senior hat. Of course I did. I just wanted to make sure the hat was big enough. When I received the hat at our first football game, I knew it would become a mainstay for the year. And yes, I know it does not fit. <laughs> but when students give you gifts, you appreciate it. And this year has been filled with many gifts. To begin the school year, the National Merit Scholars announced a reminder to everyone of why we are here, which is academics. We have the pleasure of having seven National Merit finalists and 10 National Merit commended students. The US News and World Report again made us a silver award winning high school. According to their rankings, we are in the top 7% of high schools in the United States. We all know that we're higher than that. We have 18 summa cum laude, 48 magna cum laude, and 62 cum laude graduates graduating today. On top of that, we have 96 National Honor Society members turning their tassels as well. The class of 2017 I'm going to say this really, really loudly, has earned $10,894,429 in scholarship money. It is, it is very obvious that colleges really like Dow High School. Our bands, orchestras, and choirs all earned Division I ratings at competitions this year. It is clear during marching season, at concerts, or in the community that our music program is phenomenal. Choir earned one of the highest ratings in all of the state this year at festival. Five band and orchestra students performed so well at State Solo and Ensemble, they received nominations for the Michigan Youth Arts Festival. With excellent leadership provided by the senior members of the band, our symphonic band recently earned an invitation to present a feature performance at the 13th Annual Michigan Music Conference on January 26, 2018 in the DeVos Auditorium in Grand Rapids. That invitation to perform at the conference is the highest honor awarded by the Michigan School Band and Orchestra Association. This will be the third time Dow High School has been asked to perform in the last six years. Great job. <laughs> Drama provided us with two great productions, A Christmas Carol and Annie. From acting to backstage to the pit orchestra, it was amazing. Renfair was also very well done, showcasing much charger talent. We had three students receive their Michigan State Automotive Mechanics electrical certification, and one student that earned both electrical and suspension and steering. We placed first in automotive electrical, second in master automotive, second in brakes, and second in new vehicle prep at the Delta College STS competition. We had a senior. Oh, there we, go. Yeah. 
We had a senior who won the Detroit News Catch Outstanding Graduate Award. This is given to only one, excuse me, only 24 students in the state of Michigan. Our school paper and yearbook won 84 individual awards at competitions this year. The update received a Spartan Award as well. Debate, yet again, finished as state champions. A Dow High School team won the A.H. Nicola, Nicholas Innovation Award for the fourth straight year. This award has been given out for only four years. Robotics had another fantastic year, ranked as the number one robot in Michigan at one point, and finished in the top 2% of robots in the world. Yes, I said the world. Marketing students created small businesses and raised over $6,500. We also had a team who won first place at a University of Iowa Biz Innovation. DECA had another successful year. We sent many students to the International Conference in California and left with numerous students ranked in the top 10 in the world. One group left California being first place in the world. We excelled in athletics as well, including nine SVL championships and at least two state championships. Chargers earned at least six MVPs for the Valley as well. Our fall kicked off with two state championships in one day. Girls golf and boys tennis dominated the west side of Michigan on October 15th. This was a very unique accomplishment. We also had the first Mr. Tennis from Midland Public Schools. Our girls cross country team finished 13th in the state and our girls swimming finished ninth in the state while winning their 11th straight Saginaw Valley League Championship. Our boys soccer team finished the season undefeated with their only loss to Traverse City in the district final. In a show of Charger spirit, the football team had a very impressive season at nine and two, winning their first playoff game. Girls volleyball and boys cross country also had positive seasons. Our winter season had many accomplishments as well. Our girls' basketball program won the first district title in seven years and the third Saginaw Valley League title in a row. The boys' basketball team approved from a year before, and that brought many fans to games. Our boys' swimming team won the SVL for the 15th year in a row and finished 13th in the state. Hockey was very successful and made a run in the playoffs. We had one bowler qualify for states. Two wrestlers went to states as well. Competitive cheer had a great year finishing second in the Valley. Varsity Palm ended up ninth in the state. The spring season is still going on. Our girls tennis is in the state finals, even into tomorrow. We have an all-American tennis player this year. That's pretty impressive, all-American <laughs> tennis player. Baseball has been fun to watch and, and plays tomorrow. And softball has showed a lot of heart this season and they also play tomorrow. Our track teams did fantastic representing uh, Dow High School. Several girls qualified for state finals. The lacrosse teams both had successful seasons. Boys golf did well this year. Girls soccer was fun to watch and had many great victories. Throughout the sports seasons, we have seen ups and downs. I think one of the best parts of high school athletics is passion. That is not ever seen professionally that I see and very hard to see in college anymore. There are so many lessons to be learned by getting involved in athletics. I have seen tears of joy this year and I have seen tears of disappointment. Through all of it, you have been gracious in victory and you've been humbled by defeat. Those are qualities all schools would like to see in their athletes and thank you all for that. There were many other things we did as well. I'd just like to touch on a couple more. We packaged food for Kids Against Hunger. We had a successful senior project day. We raised a lot of money for numerous charities. Great job, Chargers. I'm sure there are items that I'm missing, and I'm sure you will tell me after this speech is done, um, but Chargers are obviously very well involved, very involved. As you can see, the class of 2017 has been busy making their mark on Dow High School. This truly has been a year filled with gifts. Before we move on to diplomas, which I'm sure all of you are ready for, I have a few pieces of advice for your seniors. 
Seek a job where you love what you do to every day. Seek a job where you love what you do every day. Think about the impact you'll have on everyone, everyone you come in contact with. Be nice. It does pay off to do the right thing. People still notice when you are polite, and I think it is essential for, for success. Be able to keep a secret. Friends come and go. True friends stick around and ask your advice on everything from marriage to parenting to jobs. They need people to listen to them and then trust that you will not tell everyone what you discussed. More important than keeping a secret is keeping your word. There is one thing you have 100% control of in life, and that is your word. Your integrity, honor, and morals are what people will remember you for. Stick to them and you will not sway from your goals. Last but not least, keep in touch with your principal. <laughs> I will miss you. You have been a great class. I still want to hear about all your successes and help with anything I can to overcome any obstacles. Please remember you are part of something bigger. You are part of the Charger family. Congratulations, class of 2017. I would now like to bring up Ms. Angela Brandstadt, the president of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. So everyone, please help me welcome her with a nice round of applause. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations. On behalf of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education, it is my pleasure and honor to accept the 47th H.H. Dow High School graduating class, the class of 2017. All right, parents, the moment you have all been waiting for. <laughs> At this time, we will begin the recognition of the individual members of the class of 2017. Please refrain from applause until the last member of the class is recognized so that all names may be heard. Our first reader will be Class Secretary, Sarah Kolig. Ariana Lizelle Acker. Reem Salim Al Ahmad. Kylie Marie Alexander. Victoria Onyenyeche Anele. Nicole Marie Andriot. Devin Ray Anzarut. John James Apo. Yeah! <laughs> Nadia Zwicky Atten. <laughs> Katie Lynn Marguerite Avery. <laughs> Emily Christine Baldwin. <laughs> Austin John Bartlett. Brandon Allen Bartlett. Joseph Anthony Bassett. Bailey Nicole Battaglia. Angela Eden Botter. Noah Charles Bame. 
Keon Begsade. Matthew Thomas Finnegan Billadu. Asia Elizabeth Bobolek Blanton. Tamika Marie Booth. Stephen James Boothroyd. Quinton David Bortle. Allison Marie Borrell. Ashley Brianne Bork. Jake Ryan Bovey. David William Brandon. Michael James Bricault, Jr. Caleb Benjamin Brudo. Ashton Reve Lyric Brooks. Robert Orion Bruick. Alicia Nicole Layla Burnside. Claire Elise Butcher. Stephanie Barbara Karras. Megan Brianna Carter. Bailey James Chartier. Fiona Hui Ying Che. Matthew Car Carl Torbeth. <laughs> Sean Charles Clark. Hunter Michael Clipper. Emily Ann Colick. Madeline Ashley Coleman. James Stephen Contardi. Jeremy, I'm so sorry. Abigail Lynn Cook. Gwendolyn Isabel Cook. Madeline Angela Cook. Alexa Eileen Cooper. Gregory James Corian. Shelby Jean Cross. Cameron John Curtis. Derek William Cushman. Samantha Arnold Michelle Damocles. Logan Bruce Daniels. Joanna Elise Danielson. Connor McMahon Dasbach. Kinsey Kimmery Davis. Trevor Wayne Davis. Emily Elizabeth Dean. Leah K. Debney. Morgan Christine Dieters. Paige Alexandra Dieters. Ryan Evans Dietrich. Benjamin Michael DeRider.
Danielle May Devine. Cameron William Dolph. Maya Helen Donahue. Carolina Denozo. Olivia Claire Derlich. Melody Faith Drosner. Kavika Konala Duncan. Cody Russell Eaton. Emma Grace Eisenman. Kyle Luther Ellison. Julia May Enline. Joseph Ralph Fabiano III. Pietro William Finn. Paige Elizabeth Lou Fisher. Clayton Douglas Ford. Caitlin Nicole Franks. Madeline Amy Futter. Coral K. Gillis. Gabrielle Elizabeth Gilman. Caesar Aaron Gonzalez. Jonathan Christopher Matthew Gorman. Heather Lynn Gozen. Angelica Rose Gosco. Luke James Gunzel. Munif Manjor Hakim. Anna Marie Hales. Brittany Nicole Holm. Sage Vincent Haney. <laughs> Hannah Dorothy Hart. Tristan Lee Harvey. Isabel Marie Hasselhoon. Courtney Irene Hayward. Andrew Edward Lee Heron. Lydia Alexandra Hershauer. Megan Ann Heydrich. Juliana T. Ho. Leanne Marie Hogue. <laughs> Alexander Mark Hofius. Brendan Allen Holbrook. <laughs> Ariana Marie Homstead. Callie Elizabeth Hooper. Alexis Nicole Hoover. Danielle Jean Huey.
Alexandria Joy Huffman. Chelsea May Hutchinson. Damian Lee Inman. Hannah Marie Jacobs. Thomas Taylor Jeanette. Thomas Xavier Jensen Max. Alexandra Emma Johnson. Garrett Harold Johnson. Hannah Bonita Johnson. <laughs> Lance Matthew Johnson. Quinn Robert Johnson. Andrew Joseph Kaiser. Gabriel Paul Kalita. Sagar Krishna Kamaraju. Isabel Marie Carl. Catherine Carnoop. Cameron Thomas Keenan. Cody Dallas Kylitz. Matthew Daniel Kellen. Isabel Marie Kempel. Marta Brienz Kenjorski. David Matthew Kepner. Hamza Salik Khan. Monahill Naveed Khan. Bradley Saukan Kim. Haroon Kim. Avery James King. Chloe Lenore King. John Joseph Kirkman. Jack Thomas Kivy. Rachel Ann Klein. Joshua Benjamin Kleinsorge. Kyle Allen Coroner. Sarah Jessica Kolig. Chance Downey Kramer. Carson Jane Kruger. Brendan Philip Cook. Kayla Marie Kuzbill. Christine Ann Labby. Gabrielle Marie Lacey.
Joshua William LaForest. Molly Francis LaHaye. Haley Lynn Laplow. Kaylin Ann Lauer. Natalie Teresa Lauren. Rachel Renee Lazaro. Todd Michael Ligib. Brianna Joy Lewis. Hunter Madison Litke. Jenna Rose Beatrice Livingston. Vicente Kemp Lobo. Alexandria Rose Loisel. Camden Douglas Love. Zachary Glenn Lyman. Michaela Ann Mayer. Megan Ann Makowski. Alina Madeline Malkowski. Bruce W. Mann III. Hannah Faith Martin. Megan Elizabeth Martinsky. Ian Richard Matthews. Evan Paul McBride. Jack Ewing McCarty. Brandon Thomas McDaniel. Bailey Grace McGraw. Bethany Joy McGraw. Lauren Elizabeth McLean. Jeremy David McRoberts. Catherine Ann Meadow. Gabriella Marie Meitler. Nikhil Malgiri. Andrew Michael Menzel. Ryan Edward Mary. Grace Elizabeth Middleton. Caroline Lee Milholland. Brody Michael Miller. Kristen or Kristen Lee Miller. Marcus Nicholson Minardi. Michael James Moore. Matthew Keegan Morava. JC Joel Mori. John Henry Morgan.
Kylie Lynn Maury. Faith Nicole Murdutt. Kevin Francis Murray. Carter Aaliyah Musselman. Anna Ng Sharani Ku Milvaganam. Shauna Shrenik Nanavati. Tiffany Marie Nastorek. Audrey Alyssa Niederstedt. Kaylee Rose Niederstedt. Yuya Nishida. Skylar Cheyenne Norbury. John Robert Nozel. Nolan Ray O'Connell. Megan Elizabeth O'Hare. Samuel Matthew Ohl. Apurva Oja. Aaron Joseph Orange. Jenna Marie Osveric. Alexander Patrick Owens. Nathan Scott Painter. Austin Edward Paisley. Lucia Palencia Vialba. Maxwell Van Pavlik. Nicholas Luis Pereira. Jordan Tyler Pham. Nathaniel Thomas Pilgrim. Russell Addison Pitt. Miriam Kate Podkelson. Isaac Allen Pohl. Benjamin Gerald Samuel Price. Deanna Page Pruitt. Sean Robert Pumford. Max Tristan Race. Aaron Christian Reardon. Spencer Thomas Ray. Emily Marie Reed. Chase Everett Renaud. Grace Noel Ridley. Sophie Lynn Roeder. Ashley Eliza Rose. Nicholas Paul Sage. Woo! 
Rachel May Shar. Margaret Grace Hallberg Schaller. Jennifer Ruth Schultz. Jared Adam Searle. Anna Maria Siebeli. Varun Ravi Shankar. Ryan Merritt Schauger. Lucas Michael Shelton. Nicole Kathleen Cian. Jillian Alexandra Skinner. Brett Daniel Slaybaugh. Jessica, Jessica Lynn Smith. Peyton Marie Smith. Xavier James Spink. Arhat Srivastava. Zach Thomas Schroes. Caleb Jordan Stenger. Spencer Andrew Stevenson. Joshua Andrew Storr. Austin J. Stredney. Abigail Julia Strebel. Nicholas Ignatius Stubeck. Kathleen Joanna Sullivan. Bailey Joe Searing. Caroline Joan Zabo. Christopher Riley Zabo. Ellen May Taylor. Brianna Louise Teagan. Casey Marie Tyson. Caden Michael Thompson. Parker Stephen Thorson. Justin Michael Tobin. Jonathan Lee Tomes. Alexander Bryce Tomiko. Alejandro Uribe Lazardo. Lucinda Marie Vincent. Cassandra Elizabeth Vlasic. Emily Marie Wall. Richard Edward Wall. <laughs> Melody Wing. Kaylee Sue Wasco. <laughs> Brianna Sue Wasco.
Brianna Jane Washington. <laughs> Gary Lee Watson II. <laughs> Elizabeth May Wegner. <laughs> Madison Grace Furies. <laughs> Tanner Eugene Whistler. Julia Mackenzie Whitehead. <laughs> Tiffany Ann Williams. <laughs> Darian Antonio Wingfield. <laughs> Chastity Lynn Winters. <laughs> Wade Pierce Winton. And Elise Joy Wolford. <laughs> Ryan Nathaniel Woods. <laughs> Steel Angel Gabriel Wynn. <laughs> Sydney Lee Wynn. graduates, please rise. At this time, to mark the formal transition from student to graduate, I am honored to have you join me in moving your tassel from right to left. At this time, I would like to ask all Dow High School graduates in the audience to please rise and join the graduates of the class of 2017 in the singing of our alma mater by the Dow High School Chamber Singers. You can find the lyrics of our alma mater on the back of the commencement program.
Before closing today's graduation ceremony, I would like to have all the graduates look around and recognize the faculty, administration, friends, and family that helped you get to where you are sitting today, or standing. With the endless support and outstretched hands from these individuals, we are finally able to take on the new title as graduates and progress to the next steps in our lives. As we may all be going different places, I encourage all of you to look back and remember the place and people that shaped us into successful adults and continue to accomplish great things. Remember to enjoy the rest of your night and please drive safely. Congratulations, class of 2017.